All right, guys. Imagine that. It is another gray, gloomy day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, we have somehow stumbled into Thursday, October 7th, 2021, as the fall of 2021 <laughs> continues unabated. And uh, so since it is Thursday, dive into what is now my new Thursday roundup, and that is where I simply go over to oilprice.com for uh, various, uh, from the oil, in the fossil fuel investors' perspective uh, on the collapse of civilization and the planet and whatnot, and uh, Let's see, is it Wednesday? No, Thursday, October 7th. Yes, and uh, so last week, guys, I, uh, I think we drilled natural gas into the ground, to coin a phrase, and there's so much stuff in here, so I'm not even going to get into all of the natural gas explosion news. But uh, this is breaking news right now. All right, take it away. Oilprice.com. Global food prices are soaring amid energy crunch. And we're really going to be talking about the energy crunch uh, <clears throat> gripping the planet uh, this week. So how is this, the energy crunch, showing up at the price in the grocery store? Now, I personally have not noticed this. I am a single man with no kids. I have not noticed anything they're talking about here, but anyway, it must be true if they're saying so. They're borrowing heavy from heavily from Bloomberg in this report. <clears throat> All right. Rising energy costs have added to the supply chain disruption and crop failures to worsen an already dire situation with food prices. This is based mostly on this long story in Bloomberg, citing data from the United Nations, the latest dire report. You cannot have the, the United Nations mentioned in a sentence without the word dire. Uh, according to the dire data, the Global Food Index, uh, UN complies, has risen by one-third over the past 12 months and could continue upward as energy costs soar due to tight supplies and strong demand. This is uh, an economist from the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization whose names a name I cannot pronounce. It's this combination of things that's beginning to get worrying. It's not just the isolated food price numbers, but all of them together. I don't think anyone two or three months ago was expecting the energy prices to get this strong. Close quote. The energy crunch that has hit Europe and then spread to Asia started with gas prices, which are still running at multi-year highs due to limited supply and equally limited output from renewable energy sources. This has boosted demand for oil and coal, sending their prices higher too, and adding to pressure on the agricultural sector and related industries such as fertilizer production. Food inflation has also been pushed higher by growing demand for biofuels, yes, spurred by the green energy transition and emissions cutting goals. Some have warned the rush into biofuels threatens higher prices for basic foodstuffs that happen to double as biofuel raw materials such as corn and vegetable oil. 
the U.S. food industry is already voicing its concern about this uh, problem, which food producers and farmers have have I have no idea what word they were trying to say. Refer to as quote the diesel versus donut debate. Yes, as food and fuel compete for that oil, close quote. Uh, this is e agricultural economist David Widmar, quote, we support renewable fuels and the green agenda, but soybean oil prices have tripled. Our members are worried that they may not be able to buy any oil, meaning soybean oil. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So from food prices going through the roof, supposedly, now this is one that I, uh, that you better believe is I'm getting ready to hook up this uh, trailer to the back of my gas sucking truck and head out across the eastern U.S. Uh, you, you better believe uh, this is a uh, you can decide what this has to do with the collapse of global industrial civilization. <clears throat> we just they do, we just heard about the gas the, the gasoline prices over in uh, in Europe. How about our own country? U.S. gasoline prices rise to highest level since October 2014. The average U.S. gasoline price rose to its highest level since October 2014 on the back of higher crude oil prices, now at $81, I believe, today, and higher demand. Uh, <clears throat> AAA said ahead of the OPEC meeting on Monday, <coughs> which sent U.S crude prices to their highest level in seven years. On Sunday, U.S. gasoline prices averaged $3.20 per gallon, which is exactly what it is in Ithaca, New York. The highest price since October of 2014 due to an uptick in demand for gasoline. Wow, and to the rally in oil prices in recent days. Uh, the national average of 320 was two cents more than a month ago and a dollar and two cents more than a year ago. Uh, said Triple A spokesperson Andrew Gross, quote, Global economic uncertainty and supply chain concerns caused the lingering corona panic, caused by the lingering corona panic, could be playing a role in keeping crude oil prices elevated. Yep, yep, yep. So from skyrocketing food prices to skyrocketing gas prices. So obviously this is called oilprice.com. So you know, th this is a, a newsletter for oil, for, for fossil fuel investors. So obviously what people are doing is trying to figure out where this rally is going. So today it's around 81 and climbing. Uh, I Bank of America is predicting $100 by the end of this year. Uh, you know, 25% higher than they are now, and already these uh, oil investors are playing the long game betting on where are oil prices going by the end of 2022 as all of these energy crunches intensify and demand rises and of course the holy grail 
$200 oil. Traders, traders are betting big on a global energy crunch. Uh, who do you think is going to be the big winner out of this global energy crunch? They have an article in here, which I'm not even getting to. Uh, no shit Sherlock, the big winner uh, in the global energy crunch are these giant fossil fuel companies, which are raking it in already in coal and gas shooting through the roof. Uh, and oil right behind them. Fossil fuels are on their biggest rocket ride. And so uh, why not $200? $200 oil? Traders are betting big on the global energy crunch. Uh, some options traders are betting that oil prices could jump to $200 a barrel <coughs> by the end of next year. I think a gnat just blew down my throat. <coughs> by the end of next year, <coughs> as the energy crunch in Europe and Asia shows signs of worsening just ahead of the winter heating season in the Northern Hemisphere. <clears throat> Call options for Brent oil at $200 a barrel for December 2022 traded 1,300 times on Wednesday, according to data from IC Futures, traders would profit from those call options if oil prices were to rally to those record levels over the uh, next year. In recent days, the call options for triple digit oil prices, meaning over $100, uh, next year have increased, suggesting that more traders are betting on higher oil prices over the next 12 months. And uh, so 1,300 calls for $200 an oil, $200 oil by the end of next year and over 20,000 uh, 20,000 option, option folks going for at least $100 for a year from now. 20,000 oil investors, uh, you know, rolling the dice on $100, 1,300, 1,300 of the big players rolling their dice on $200 in oil. And guys, obviously, this <clears throat> article doesn't get into it, but clearly, uh, $200 a barrel <coughs> oil <coughs> would bring on the total collapse of global in, uh, of the global industrial economy. So, if these 1,300 guys are right, these 1,300 high rollers are correct. Uh, you can expect global, the global industrial economy to collapse in the next 12 months. And it will, uh, anyone who's claiming the, cor the corona panic is a bad hair day compared to what's coming down the pike will be vindicated. <clears throat> but we're going to move on. Let's see. Uh, okay, so the big story last week that I was talking about was the the uh, energy crisis going on in Europe. So we're going to pivot to the east. We're going to take Barack Obama's uh, cue, and we're going to pivot to the east and and look at how the uh, developing uh, energy crisis is shaping up over there in Asia, particularly China and India, and seeing uh, 
you know, making some calls on what that means for prices for stuff made in China. Take a wild guess. <clears throat> All right, let's just look at the whole of Asia. How will Asia react to record-breaking energy prices? Record high coal and liquefied natural gas prices in Asia are threatening to slow down the fastest growing economies in the region. The global, the global energy crunch, which has energy imp importing countries scrambling to secure supply even at today's record prices, could be a major speed bump on the road to the much touted energy transition. Yes, this is, you know, the drawing the dots uh, and, and how much this energy transition is going to take place. Asia is the poster child of reliance on coal. The dirtiest fossil fuel still accounts for large shares of power generation and is the driver of industrial economic growth, including in the world's second largest economy and top oil and natural gas importer, China. The current immediate government policy in China as well as in India is to secure energy supply for the winter, meaning is to secure fossil fuel energy supply for the winter at all cost to prevent power outages that would cripple China's economic growth and put future and put further strains on global supply chains, meaning all of this made in China, planet-eating crap uh, coming to this country. Uh, you better believe that the folks at the Dollar Tree are freaking out here. Uh, coal prices surged to a record high last week. So did uh, liquid natural gas prices in Asia, beating the previous record set last winter. Long term, economies in Asia are at a crossroads. They could continue to rely on large amounts of coal and gas as the basis for their power generation and industries and prepare for more supply and price shocks in the future, blah, blah, blah. So all of this, guys, obviously, uh, you know, the, these fossil fuel investors who are the ones reading oilprice.com, absolutely uh, cheering all of this on uh, as anybody on the planet depending on all of this crap from China is freaking out, uh, you know, join the club. If you want to make money on the collapse of a planet, uh, this is, uh, you know, heady days uh, to be investing in fossil fuels. Uh, fossil fuels are getting red. The, the burning of fossil fuels. Uh, I'm going to make the prediction right now. I mean, this is no, you know, I usually save this uh, for January 1st, but I think it's pretty clear, guys, uh, that uh, the year 2022 will see more uh, burning of fossil fuels, that carbon emissions are going to go through the roof as this whole notion uh, of this. Uh, energy transition to clean, green, renewable energy, everything that, that's going to come out of the words uh, of those lion sacks of shit hypocrites at COP26 is a joke. Throw it in the garbage. Okay? Uh, this energy transition. Uh, nobody, uh, you, you, who cares? 
it's the biggest pack of lies, but anyway. Uh, all right. So let's zero in on China. Uh, we're just going to break this down. We're going to look in at China and India. Then we're going to move on and wrap up with a couple more. So, okay, coming out of China, uh, this is oilprice.com spin on it. Oil prices soar as Beijing orders energy suppliers to stock up for winter. China is officially panicking. Now that the global energy crisis has slammed China's economy, leading to the first contractionary PMI since March of 2020 as a result of widespread shutdowns of factories and manufacturing, not to mention hundreds of millions of Chinese residents now suffering from periodic blackouts, China's central government officials, according to Bloomberg, quote, ordered the country's top state-owned energy companies to secure supplies, meaning fossil fuel supplies, for this winter at all cost, close quote. Translation. Beijing is no longer willing to risk social anger and going forward, China will be subsidizing coal and natural gas, which will lead to even higher prices, which will lead to even higher prices for other substitute commodities, such as, well, take a while to guess, what is the substitute commodity for, for, for coal and gas? How about oil? Wow! Which is why the price of oil surged on the news. Uh, the news about, the, about oil follows a report on Wednesday that China will allow soaring coal prices to be passed on to factories in electricity prices. <clears throat> uh, anyway, guys, and take a wild guess uh, what that means uh, for people uh, over here in the U.S. Uh, buying anything made in China, and you add that to all of the, you know these global shipping prices. What have they quadrupled? The the price to ship this crap from China has quadrupled uh, in, in in the past year, and 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 now uh, who do you think they're going to have absolutely zero problem? passing the cost to. It's going to show up in your wallet if you, like me, are, are buying these made in China, uh, these made in China computers, these made in China glasses. Uh, this might be one of the last pair of these 99 cent glasses I bought at the Dollar Tree. When I went to the Dollar Tree last month, I was horrified to find, at least in Ithaca, New York, that uh, these glasses, these reading glasses, are no longer available at the Dollar Tree for the simple reason that the Dollar Tree cannot make a profit by selling them for a dollar. They have been priced out of the Dollar Tree as more and more of this crap, as it needs to be, going to be priced out of the Dollar Tree. Uh, okay, <clears throat> how about India? India's coal crunch could drag on for six months. Uh, I don't know why they're limiting it to six months. The current coal shortage in India, which has an average of just three days worth of coal in stockpiles, could last up to six month, months, Power Minister R.K. Singh uh, said. Uh, 
India's massive coal fleet is running out of coal, threatening a power crunch in the country that relies on the dirtiest fossil fuel for most of its electricity generation. Coal is the major power generating fuel in India, accounting for 70% of electri electricity generation there. Uh, coal inventories at many of the 135 coal-fired power plants are now at critically low levels while India scrambles to get more coal amid a global crunch of energy supply and skyrocketing prices of coal and natural gas. There you go. Uh, said the energy minister, I don't know whether I will be comfortable in the next five to six months. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, as of October 1st, coal stocks were critically low at 104 of the 135 power plants, otherwise known as 77% uh, of all plants. But let's get a little closer to our own country, uh, just kind of... Uh, hodgepodges. This is, is going on between us and Canada. Line 5 oil pipeline battle goes international. Canada has invoked a 1977 pipeline treaty to seek bilateral ne negotiations with the U.S. over the future of the Line 5 oil pipeline, which has caused a bitter legal dispute between the state of Michigan and pipeline operator Enbridge. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, revoked Enbridge's easement for the operation of the twin Line 5 pipeline uh, last year, citing repeated violations of the easement and the need to protect the Great Lakes. Uh, Michigan's notice required Enbridge to cease operations of the pipeline in the Strait of Mackinac. Uh, by May, Enbridge simply ignored the notice and continues running the pipeline. Yep. The company says that only a court and the U.S. federal government have authority to order line five shut down. Canada has been trying for months to engage the Biden administrations in talks over the pipeline, aiming to keep Line 5, a major outlet for Canada's oil producers into the U.S., open. Yep, yep. Uh, anyway, we will see about that. So, you know, this just is a perfect example. So, uh, you tell these planet eaters, uh, a, a state governor uh, orders one of these planet eating uh you know, pipeline builders and bridge, uh, can it stop it? And they go right on uh, with the bulldozers. There's not a damn thing uh, that the state uh, of Michigan do, can do to stop someone like the Enbridge Corporation. But uh, we've been doing all of this talk about all of these fossil fuels. So, uh, I just want to, let's just give a nod to hydropower, that clean green hydropower. So, we're going to end up, we're going to wrap up down in South America, uh, looking, you know, who been touting hydropower. Latin America uh, really 
uh, banking on that clean green <coughs> hydropower. So here is how the the transition from fossil fuels to hydropower is going. <coughs> Recent news from the global electricity sector looks grim. <coughs> yes. South Americans heavily dependent on hydroelectricity face drought-induced scarcity. It's hard to believe in a continent laced by three enormous river systems. The alternatives for South American electricity users are an increased reliance on fossil fuels or turning off the lights. Yeah, right. And unlike relatively inexpensive hydroelectricity, generating electricity with fossil fuels, apart from the ecological consequences, incurs fuel expense, which raises prices. The news emphasizes growing inflationary pressures, and this certainly feeds into that narrative, but there is a more worrisome problem for energy planners here. <clears throat> more droughts mean that hydro can no longer be considered a firm long-term resource for the electrical grid. Subtracting a major low-cost resource like hydro from a region's energy mix and replacing it in any other fashion is an enormous financial undertaking. Just as countries are moving to reduce their reliance on fossil fuels, one of the cleanest energy sources becomes scarcer. And uh, more good news coming out of South America for the fossil fuel investors. I tell you guys, uh, if I had put that money that I put into all of that silver that got ripped off by my tenant into fossil fuels in 2008, if uh, that $18,000 that I invested into physical silver, which I think is worth about sixty or $70,000 today, uh, <clears throat> if I had put it into fossil fuels, uh, good Lord, I would be a rich man today. <clears throat> but anyway, I have to wrap this up because your old Airbnb super host is getting ready for a major in flux and uh, I gotta get in here to this tiny house and start cleaning up my tiny house waiting for the Airbnb invasion this weekend. So I suggest if you want to make money off the collapse of a planet, get out there and invest in fossil fuels while you still can because uh, it's gonna cost you a lot more than uh, tomorrow, than today. <clears throat> Bye, guys. All right, little dog. You can go get your chippies. <laughs>